Hello everyone. Today we are going to read about one of the very important topic in clinical biochemistry. So today we are going to read about the bacteria's spirochetes. So spirochetes are the bacteria that are spiral shaped with axial filament. You can also see in this picture is that the picture uh, shown of the bacteria it is spiral shaped bacteria and it is present with the axial filament. So the various uh, spirochetes includes Borrelia, uh, Leptospira and Treponema. So in this video we are going to talk in detail about the disease caused by the Borrelia, uh, disease caused by the Leptospira and the disease caused by the Treponema. The uh, Borrelia causes the Lyme disease whereas the Leptospira causes the Leptospirosis and Will disease uh, whereas the Treponema causes the Syphilis especially the Treponema pallidum causes the Syphilis. Now let us discuss about one by one in detail. First of all let us talk about the Lyme disease. So the Lyme disease is caused by the Borrelia burgdorferi. So it is transmitted by the Exodist DRT. You can also see in this picture the Exodus uh, DRT is shown. So it is mainly transmitted by this DRT. And the natural reservoir of this um, bacteria is the mouse and deer is essential for the uh, transmission of the diseases. So how, how the Borrelia bacteria are visualized? So the Borrelia is very big uh, bacteria. So it is directly visualized by the aniline dye uh, by the light microscopy. Um, so also the Borrelia is visualized by the right or Gemsystem. So there are three stages of the Lyme disease stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3. So in the stage 1, we called it as a early localized stage. So in the early localized stage, there is erythema migrans. So there is presence of the uh, typical bullseye configuration, which is the pathognomic but not always present in the early localized stage 1 of the Lyme disease. You can also see in this picture. Uh, of the erythema migraines. So it has the bullseye configuration. Now let us go towards the stage 2 which is also the known as early disseminated stage. So in the stage 2 early disseminated stage there is presence of the secondary lesions. Also there is uh, features of the carditis, atrioventricular uh, block, the facial nerve palsy and migratory myalgia. Uh, also there could be the transient arthritis. Now let us talk about the stress 3 of the Lyme disease. In stress 3 there is the late dissemination uh, or also we called it as the late disseminated stage. So in the stress 3 what happens there is presence of the encephalopathy and chronic arthritis. How the treatment is done of the Lyme disease? The doxycycline is the first line of drug that is used for the Lyme disease. Amoxicillin can also be used and if the condition is severe that means uh, if there is presence of encephalopathy then ceftriaxone can be given. Now let us talk about the uh, leptospira interrogans. So the leptospira interrogans is a spirochete with the hook shaped ends. The reservoir of this bacteria is water contaminated with animal urine. So the animal urine which are infected by the leptospira if they contaminated the water by the uh, various urinal product then the water source will become the reservoir of this bacteria and after we ingest uh, this water uh, then we, uh, we we contract the bacteria leptospira various diseases uh, occur by the leptospira interrogans those are the leptospirosis and will disease the leptospirosis present like the flu like symptom and it has myalgia um, classically it is presence of calves there is presence of jundis photophobia with conjunctival uh, suffusion that means erythema without exudates and it is prevalent among sufferers and in the tropic uh, especially in the Hawaii. So now let us discuss about the Wells, Wells disease. The Wells disease is also known as the icterohemorrhagic leptospirosis and it is the uh, severe form with the jaundice and azotemia from the liver and kidney dysfunction. There is also presence of fever, hemorrhage and anemia. Now let us talk about one of the important topic that is syphilis. Syphilis is the one of the important topic 
uh, in the spirogates and it is mainly caused by the Tryponema pallidum. How the uh, bacteria of the syphilis, that means Tryponema pallidum is visualized. Uh, it, is, it is visualized by the dark field microscopy um, and there are mainly three stages uh, of the syphilis. Uh, that are primary syphilis, secondary syphilis, and tertiary syphilis. The latent syphilis comes uh, between the secondary and the tertiary syphilis. So now let us discuss about the primary syphilis. So the, in the primary syphilis, there is presence of the painless sunker. So you can also see in this picture, there is the sunker present in the uh, male genitalia. It is the painless lesion. How the primary syphilis can be uh, diagnosed? The VDRL is positive in the 80% of the patient in the primary syphilis. However, we can do the specific test. Now let us move towards the um, secondary syphilis. Again, I'm going to mention that the VDRL positive is present in the primary syphilis in the 80% of the cases, but um, we can also use the dark flick microscopy to visualize the trypanema in the fluid from the sunker. So, the fluid, fluid that is oozing out from the sunkers, we can directly visualize in the dark field microscopy and we can visualize the um, spirochetes. Now let us discuss about the secondary syphilis. The secondary syphilis, there is disseminated systemic disease. Uh, so uh, there is constitutional symptom, uh, maculopapular rash. You can also see in this picture, the person suffering from the secondary syphilis, there is the maculopapular rash. It is also present in the palm and the soles. Also, there is presence of the uh, condyloma lata. The condyloma lata is the specific features of the secondary syphilis. There is smooth, painless, wart-like lesions on the genitals. Mm, you can also see the condyloma lata in this picture. There is presence of the lymphadenopathy, patchy hair loss is present. Um, and the secondary syphilis can be confirmed by the dark field microscopy. Also, you can do serology testing. Um, the VDRL and RPR tests are non-specific in the secondary syphilis, but fluoronumal triponomal antibody uh, test is very specific in the secondary syphilis. Now let us discuss about the latent syphilis. The latent syphilis is uh, the stage that is present between the secondary syphilis and the tertiary syphilis. It is the stage that has positive serology without the symptoms. So this is the... Um, Latin syphilis. Now let us talk about tertiary syphilis. In the tertiary syphilis, there is presence of the uh, gomma. It is um, chronic granulomatous lesion. Uh, you can also see in this picture, the picture of the gomma is present. Uh, the picture of gomma it is present and it is chronic granulomatous lesion. There also uh, can be called aortitis as the vasa vasarum destruction. And there could be the neurosyphilis. Uh, the neurosyphilis, we also call it as a tebes dorsalis. There is also presence of the Argyle Robertson pupil. The Argyle Robertson pupil means the pupil constrict with accommodation but is not reactive to light. Um, also, the Argyle Robertson pupil in the syphilis, tertiary syphilis, is known as the prostitute pupil since it accommodates but it does not react. So, uh, various signs we present are broad based ataxia, positive wrong words, uh, charcoal's joint, there is stroke without the hypertension. And in the for the neurosyphilis, we see this. We take out the spinal fluid for the uh, sample, and we do the VDRL test of the spinal fluid. We also do the fluoronumal uh, fluorescent triponemal antibody test, and we can also do the polymerase chain reaction. Now let us discuss about the congenital syphilis. So congenital syphilis is one of the important um, uh, topic in the whole syphilis chapter. Uh, so there is transplacental transfer. Uh, uh, Transplacental transmission of the syphilis. Uh, the transplacental trans, uh, transmission can occur in the first trimester. So the treatment of the mortar should be done promptly if there is um, if there is confirmation of the diagnosis in the pregnant mother. So now, what are the various features that we see in the congenital syphilis? In the congenital syphilis, we uh, see the uh, rag days, we see the snowfalls. We see the saddle nose. The snuffles you can also see in this picture is that there is nozzle discharge and uh, there is nozzle discharge. There is specific nozzle discharge uh, in the snuffles. 
so there is Hutchinson's teeth you can see also in this picture there is presence of the Hutchinson's teeth that means there is no teeth uh, there can be presence of the mulberry molars you can also see the picture of the mulberry molars uh, there can be the short maxilla uh, there could be presence of the severe sin uh, canal lobe eight deafness can be present in the congenital syphilis so these are the various features of the congenital syphilis so as i have already told the treatment of the mother should be done promptly after the diagnosis of the syphilis you have to know in mind that uh, the transplacental uh, transmission occur in the first trimester so the treatment of the mother should be done as early as possible or it is advised uh, advised to become uh, the pregnant after the treatment of the syphilis so uh, so today in this chapter uh, we discussed various diseases that are caused by the spirochetes again i am going to uh, summarize in brief so uh, spirochetes includes borrelia leptospira and treponema borrelia causes the lyme disease there are you should know the three stages of the uh, lyme disease the leptospira causes the leptospirosis and the wheel disease uh, the treponema pallidum causes the syphilis and there are mainly the three stages of the syphilis primary syphilis secondary syphilis and the tertiary syphilis the latent syphilis comes in between the secondary syphilis and the tertiary syphilis and there is the congenital syphilis that you should know in the congenital syphilis the treatment of the mother should be done treatment of the pregnant mother should be done as early as possible and you should keep in mind that uh, there is transplant uh, transplacental transmission occurs in the first trimester so i hope you understood this um various topics on the spirochetes thank you